My name is Steve Hurley. I'm the Southeast District Fisheries Manager for the Mass Division of Fisheries and Wildlife. And we're going to be electroshocking to try to determine uh, the trout population in the river. It is one of the few salter brook trout streams remaining in southeastern Massachusetts. And we last sampled it in 1990. Uh, so we're going to sample it again today to make sure the trout is still in here and find out what we have for numbers and sizes. And the instrument or the technique that we're going to be using to sample the brook is a backpack electrofishing unit. Uh, we have a, a DC battery here and basically the power goes into this unit and it puts out, it bumps up the voltage to about 400 volts and it puts out a pulsed DC current. So there's pulses of current that are going to be going into the river. This is uh, the negative end or the cathode. Uh, this is going to be trailing behind me. Uh, this is also called, called the rat tail. It's the negative end of the electric field. The positive end, or the anode, is this ring right here. And basically, this, uh, when we go into the river, we're going to be setting up an electric field between the positive and the negative. And basically, this electric field sets up an electric charge pattern in the stream. And it's going to, uh, as we go along, when it encounters the fish, the fish are going to feel that electric current and it's basically going to cause the muscles on one side of the fish to tense up more than the other side. So fish will be here, it will cause it to tense up and it will actually cause the fish to swim towards this anode. When it gets close enough to the anode, uh, basically it will get stunned and the fish will flip over on its side and that's when we'll dip it up with the nets and put it in a bucket. Now, the fish should recover basically within uh, a few seconds to a few minutes depending on the charge they get. Uh, this is the standard sampling gear uh, for small streams uh, throughout the country basically. And so in terms of the safety briefing for people that haven't done it before, uh, if you ask any electrician, basically electricity and water doesn't mix. Uh, you don't want to uh, have an electric charge going in the water without some sort of protection or you could get stunned. Uh, basically, this is can be a very dangerous piece of equipment uh, because your heart is an electrical instrument. And if this electric charge hits your heart at the wrong moment in the beat, it could cause your heart to stop. Uh, so we're going to avoid that at all costs. And basically, the way we do that is we insulate ourselves from the electric current. We'll all have waders on that will insulate us from the water. And we'll also have rubber gloves. So basically, this protects us from any electric charge that may be set up by the unit. Basically, we have uh, at least three species of fish in here. We have uh, wild brook trout, a uh, number of different age classes. We have uh, the redfin pickerel, which is kind of the native stream fish. It's generally found in the, the warmer water streams than the wild brook trout. And we have American eel, which basically come up uh, from the ocean. They spawn off of uh, Bermuda and then they migrate up as little elvers in the spring into these streams. Uh, primarily a lot of the fish that you find in these streams are now the, the redfin pickerel which is a native uh, small species of pickerel and this fish is actually adapted to warmer temperatures and also it can tolerate very low oxygen conditions. So it's able to tolerate a lot of the habitats that have been modified uh, since the 1600s. You can see its red fins, uh, that gives it its name, but if you look at the head, the other name for it is kind of uh, the bulldog pickerel. It's a greatly shortened snout compared to the chain pickerel. The other identifying character is this black bar underneath the eye. Uh, kind of tilts towards the back. And this one's at uh, red thin pickerel at 161. Brook trout are primarily restricted to the streams actually a lot smaller than this uh, that are groundwater fed. And in fact, uh, the abundance of brook trout in southeastern Massachusetts is way less than it was uh, when the European settlers first arrived in 1620. One of the first things that people did was start building dams for power, which created warm water habitat and also blocked off the fish from uh, the salt water, which a lot of these uh, fish used to go down into the salt water at times and come back in a much larger size. Yeah, the, the question was asked whether these are actually uh, remnants of hatchery stock fish, fish that had been stocked here years ago and they're just offspring of hatchery fish. Uh, well, a recent study by Brendan Annette, uh, who is now the reserve manager at the Hoyt Bay National Estuarine Research Reserve, 
tested that hypothesis. The hypothesis was that they were very similar to the hatchery stock. Well, Brendan uh, sampled brook trout from a number of salter brook trout streams on Cape Cod, including uh, Red Brook, uh, the Quashnet River, the Mashpee River, and the Santuit River, as well as a salter brook trout stream on Long Island and the sandwich fish hatchery stock. And what Brendan found was these fish were in fact very different from the hatchery strain of brook trout based on DNA analysis. And in fact, they were very different from each other, indicating that there was almost a unique strain of fish for each river. In fact, one of the things that surprised me uh, of the study was how different fish from two very nearby streams were. Uh, the Mashpee and Santuit River, both of them feed into Pompanesset Bay. And I always considered the Santuit River as just a branch of the Mashpee River fish, but basically what Brendan found is they were their own unique strain of fish. They were very different uh, from each other. Each stream had its own little unique subpopulation of brook trout. A little squirmy when you measure them. We're basically measuring the uh, total length of the fish. Going to squeeze the tail, things together. It's one of the things that you encounter in the field. This fish flip off the board and that sort of things. It's a lot different than uh, the laboratory setting. You can see he's real dark in coloration. Uh, these rivers around here are often stained with tannic acids from uh, cedar swamps and a variety of other ones. This one actually has a notch in its tail. And you make a note of that, eh? 